Hello, this is Romeo Cat Computers, and today I will be showing my x86 assembly operating system. And I'd like to put operating system in quotations because you really can't do a whole lot with it. So I started doing x86 assembly sometime in late August of last year, 2021. And uh, since then, I mean, I've gotten better, but you'll see in here, since this is my first proper assembly program, that it's rather primitive, and uh, I'll step through the versions of this. This is version 1.0, of course, and I'll kind of show you how it advanced and how I added features, and you'll also see how I eventually figure out how to overcome what I now view as trivial tasks. Um, I later worked on a graphical operating system, which is for the most part done. And currently in the works, I'm making a little 80-column uh, text mode game where you can run around and do things. Uh, these are all, of course, also x86 programs. And I will eventually be doing videos on those, but this one is no longer being worked on. So I'll show that. I've been meaning to do this for a while. So this is... I've deemed it Fig Leaf OS, and it would look like, from the start, a pretty respectable terminal. But you see, it tells you to press things. Now I'm going to show the help menu. Oh, i got to move over here. Yeah, so you can't actually type something and then press enter, because I didn't know how to do that. So, what it does is when you push a key, it simulates you typing something in. And it just throws it on the screen imme immediately. And you can also see it's rather lacking in features. This was the big thing I, I was so excited on how to do. I could change it to a box cursor, and then I could change it to a flat cursor. Um, which isn't very exciting, but I kind of found that cool. I also uh, discovered the uh, Interrupt 11 in the BIOS to allow you to show how many things of all kinds of different things. In this case, I'm using it for floppy disks. And there are indeed two. There's the actual USB floppy drive I'm running this off of, and then I put a, a blank floppy disk image in virtual machine on here uh, just so that I could see if it would detect two, and indeed it does. And you can also get the version, and that's about it. So the next version I have is going to be version 1.1. The whole naming scheme was that I'd add a, a tenth, like the point one, if I just fix little things here and there. Then I'd add, advance it to like two or three or four if I made some major change. But this is a point one. And here I'll reset it. And the reason it's going to take a while is I am running this off of a USB floppy drive. And of course I save all of my work on a flash drive. But because I'm using a USB floppy drive, it's easy for when I want to test it on a real machine to just take the floppy disk out and pop it in some old computer. So anyway, here's uh, 0 point, or 1.1. The help menu is the same, except I've organized it a bit better. And you can also see uh, I've added the feature to look for a math coprocessor, which is another thing you can do in the BIOS equipment list, which is interrupt 11, or 1.1 hex. And so I kind of started taking advantage of those. So, of course, I can set it to B. And I get the number floppy disks. And then I go flat. Now, M for math coprocessor, there is one, because of course there is. I'm running an AMD FX 4300, which, I mean, is, isn't very good for nowadays, but of course it's going to have math coprocessing. And then I do version 1.0. Now, here's an issue I had, is once I got to the bottom of the screen, because not only did I have very primitive features, but I had very primitive methods of putting things on the screen. And so, because of that, when I got to the bottom of the screen, it was basically frozen up. Can't really do anything. So that's why you can press C to clear the screen, and it'll take you back to the top, which is a pretty dirty system.
but I wasn't really sure what else to do. And then I can keep uh, typing stuff until I get to the bottom. You see, even when it tries to show the help menu and it's already at the bottom, it kind of freaks out. So, the next version is version 2.0. And I will reset the PC here. Uh, still loading off floppy disk. Here we go. So, you'll notice a few things at the top are different. I still have to put in the, uh, the reset button. I've changed it to Q. And you'll see why. But now it says type HP. Well, look at this. You can now type things. Now, it's still very limited because I still use primitive methods. If there that was to be pressed, I would have to have code for the H key and the P key. And here's the help list, of course. But that meant that I would have to program something for every single key on the keyboard. So I just ended up programming only the keys that would be used. So, like, I'm pressing Z right now, and I didn't put any code in there for Z, because Z is not used in the command. So why I chose Q as the reset key. So anyway, if we go back to the help menu, CB for cursor box, and this is the same, MathCo. Uh, I didn't really change or add any new features. I just made it so you could type things in. And sure enough, I got the bottom of the screen. It doesn't really know what to, to do now. Uh, let me... And, of course, if you type in a bunch of mumbo-jumbo, it'll tell you that that's incorrect. So here we have version 2.1. And because it's a .1, it's basically just a minor update from 2.0. So coming back over here, I'm going to do HP. And I did add a new command, which is uh, CM, check for mouse. That's just another... Uh, BIOS equipment list feature and that's it everything else is exactly the same so here we have version 3.0 now when it comes to putting characters on the screen I don't know how to do strings and even to this day I still don't know how to do that so when it comes to putting even just this stuff at the top here each of these is like two or three lines of code. And so when the help list started getting bigger, because I was adding more commands, I got tired of making it bigger, and then eventually the whole program, in turn, would be a bigger file size. Not that that really mattered, but it kind of annoyed me. So now, when you go to the help menu, it just tells you to do this. The issue is when dusting this version off, trying to reuse it, I figured out that I never actually made a manual slash online documentation. So I had to pull up the actual code here uh, just to figure out what to do. But anyway, I remember now. So one of the things is with the BIOS equipment list, I was also tired of putting a single command for each and every single one. So now you can type Bell1, Bell standing for BIOS equipment list, Bell2, and you, uh, this goes all the way up to 9. This goes through, uh, as far as I can tell, all of the BIOS equipment list data you can pull off of it. And we've reached the bottom of the screen. And then here, if you do Bell R for raw data, we'll give you the raw data. And I don't didn't really know how to convert internal computer values into their equivalent value in ASCII using numbers and letters. So I have it print the equivalent ASCII value. And so the smiley face represents hex 02. And the uh, lowercase o, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but you can look at the DOS code page. But if you convert that to hex decimal into binary, that shows the BIOS equipment list, and of course these will change depending on your computer's configuration. This is just what my uh, virtual machine comes up as. Uh, furthermore, you can do 
CHRMP character map. It'll show you all the available characters. And you can't do anything with this in the operating system, but if you do run this on a variety of different computers, you'll find sometimes newer computers will have a higher resolution character set. I believe that's like the VGA 9x16 or something, which is totally backwards compatible, but it's kind of interesting to learn more about like what kind of BIOS your computer has, or how new, or if it has the high resolution character set, which in this case it doesn't. And then, of course, the classics are still here. Uh, CB, CF, CF, and VR. Hit the bottom of the screen. And all those other ones you saw before. So this is version 4.0. And you see if you do uh, HP, it will again give you this. Now, again, I also forgot to write manual slash online documentation. I had to look at the code. I realized the code hasn't actually changed. Although it's a major version. I'm trying to remember what it was that changed. Uh, but I know in one of the versions, when I incremented it, it didn't really make it different. But it changed a bunch of stuff under the hood. Oh, I think it's this one. Yes. This is when I finally fixed the problem of the bottom of the screen. Uh... Q still clears the screen, of course. I mean, I kind of just have that in there. But I can uh, do all kinds of things here. And because when I look back at my line feed code, I realized that it was absolute garbage, which is why when it got to the bottom of the screen, it kind of just didn't know what to do. So then I went back and I made it not garbage. And now everything's in order. So I can just forever go down the screen as much as I want. So here we are in version 5.0. And first thing you'll see is the help menu is back. And I realized how annoying it was to not have the help menu, so I brought it back. And some things have changed. So BEL, I got tired of the system of having to manually type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or R. So I just made it when you type it in, it shows everything. Then I also figured out how to make it show the raw data in hexadecimal, which in this configuration is hex 026F. And you can convert that into binary and look up the table. Now some of the uh, stuff above here is a little inaccurate, um, but no matter what, this is always correct. It's telling you the raw value. Uh, there is indeed a floppy drive, math coprocessor, a mouse, video mode 3, that's right, that's right. But then when you get to serial devices, uh, it's a little confusing, because does 0 mean 1, or does 0 mean actually none? Game port and modem, that's pretty explanatory. Although some computers and BIOS version will use this differently. Like some don't say modem here. And then same with parallel devices. I don't have any parallel devices installed. But it registers as one. But this is always correct right here. So anyway, besides that, I won't bother showing the cursor changer. And the uh, character map is the same. Uh, CLS, I put that in because I use command prompt and DOS a lot. And so I naturally go to type in CLS, and of course, before I added that, I type in CLS and it tell me I can't do anything. Also, I've made it so that you don't need a line of code for every single key. So you can type in whatever the heck you want, even the, uh, oh, I thought the shift key works, guess not. Type all these characters in. Uh, of course, it only works with the correct characters. And then RST, that triggers interrupt 19, which I believe when it's running on top of DOS, we'll just go back to DOS. But running in virtual machine will actually, like, reboot the system. Now, running it on real hardware, you kind of get a mixed bag. Some of my computers, they lock up. Some of them, they start booting Windows. Some of them, they actually properly reset. I think this is really meant 
for if you're writing on top of DOS, which I'm not. But here, in this case, of course, it just resets it. So here we are in version 5.1. See, a few new things have been added. So first, we have this uh, FDD. Now this is, uh, of course, Interrupt 13, Service 8. And this was just me testing the uh, Interrupt 13 hex, just to see what it is. Which, uh, 1, 3 hex is all of the different disk commands. And the thing is, with assembly, it's never simple. You have to manually tell it all kinds of things. What sector, what track, what device, what day of the week it is, what color underwear you're wearing. If you use the DOS interrupts, running this on top of DOS is a bit easier. But, of course, I'm not doing that. So this was just me testing that out. This is just shows the output of... Uh, service hex 8 and another new one is VGA and so it displays a test pattern because I was starting to get into looking at the uh, 320 by 200 mode which gives you 256 colors which of course won't work on really 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 old computers old IBM compatibles but of course will work in virtual box and most modern computers and that just kind of shows the VGA and other than that that's really the only new things that were added so this is a development version at the time, I was willing to work on it a bit more. I've kind of been done messing about with it, but this is basically version 5.1, but in the middle of me adding stuff to it, and when it, w when it was going to be done, it was going to be like version 5.2, or maybe 6, depending on what I added. And so one of the things I added was that startup animation that you just saw. And believe it or not, that thing takes up an entire half of the operating system, meaning that when I added it, it doubled it. And the uh, file size is about 9 kilobytes, which of course really isn't a whole lot. So, other things I added. Uh, let's see, where is it? If you do FDD, no. RBS. So... This was me trying to experiment with floppy drive stuff using Interrupt 13, which, as I said earlier, is very difficult and very manual. Now, this doesn't actually work. This does not actually show the boot sector of the floppy drive. But it excited me because when I run it, it will actually make the floppy drive spin a bit. And, of course, it doesn't actually do anything out of that, but oh well. And other than that, um, everything else is exactly the same. I kind of just gave up development after this. Started working on other ones, which I will show in future videos. So here I'm going to run it on real hardware. First one I'll do is this Toshiba netbook. I have the floppy drive plugged in, and the floppy disk is currently loading. This has the latest version with, of course, that startup animation. Here we go. And if we do character map, you'll see it does have some of the higher resolution characters that you see. The at symbol is higher resolution. Who these other ones are. And other than that, I mean, it's the exact same. But it kind of shows that it works on real So hardware. here we have another computer. This one is the Potato PC. You can see it doesn't really appear to use the higher resolution character set. I'll show another interesting thing. BIOS equipment list. You can see it is a, a different configuration than the virtual machine. Here's the final PC I'll be testing. 
This is the uh, AMD Jet Engine computer. And this is a bit older, something maybe more likely to have this ran on. It's a bit slower when drawing the screen. There's the character map, and here's BIOS equip list. And you can see this number is a bit different because it actually has some serial and some parallel ports. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you found it interesting. Maybe it'll inspire you to write some assembly. There's enough demand. I'll make a quick little video on making assembly programs and then running them on real hardware. And also keep posted for the future videos. Because like I said before, I have other ones that I'll show.